So Jack Frost came out in 1998 and stars Michael Keaton. Now this film is a family film and came out one year after the uh, Jack Frost horror film came out, which caused massive confusion for a lot of people, uh, definitely including me. Um, I remember always being in search for the horror Jack Frost, but only being able to find this Jack Frost. And I do have a review of Jack Frost, the horror movie, uh, that I just reviewed not too long ago as well on this channel, so you can check that out if you want. Uh, but this is the Michael Keaton version. This is the family version, which uh, didn't do too well in either box office or uh, amongst critics. I remember this film... Uh, <laughs> being quite cheesy and uh, not really liking it as a kid. Um, it, it, it wasn't one that I watched all the time. I think I only watched it like two or three times, but uh, it never really caught my interest uh, back then. I'd never known who Michael Keaton was at the time. I didn't know really who any actor was at the time. I was probably 10. Uh, well, I was nine when it came out, so I was probably like nine or 10 when I watched it. But um, this is one of the films that um, Michael Keaton basically, he was big at this time and then he disappeared for a while and then he started being in everything else. A lot of actors and actresses uh, tend to do that a lot, but um, I don't know if this was one of his like last bigger roles or not, but uh, he's decent in it. And I haven't seen this film also since I was a kid, so this is the first time I've seen it in a long time which I remember bits and pieces of it, and watching it again definitely brought up, brought back a lot of nostalgia for it. Um, and I would say that I enjoyed it better than when I first watched it as a kid, uh, but not that much better. <laughs> uh, it was entertaining enough, I'll just say that. It wasn't horrible, um, it wasn't awful re-experiencing it, but uh, it's, you know, it's... it's We'll get into it. <laughs> we'll get into it. Um, Michael Keaton plays a guy named Jack Frost. Go figure. Uh, he's in a band called the Jack Frost Band. So <laughs> this film is very, very specific and original, isn't it? Um, he's in this band, and uh, he's in his 40s. He has a kid uh, and a wife, so he has a family. And he's always on tour. He's constantly on tour, uh, touring with the Jack Frost Band, and they're trying to make it big. He's never really caught a huge break. He has, um, like, he brings in enough income to support a family, obviously, although he's never home. Um, not really super close with his son. Um, they have kind of a strong bond-ish. Like, the son does have a lot of love and respect for his dad, but he's constantly disappointed. You got your, you know, trope. Dad's never there. Dad's always... You know, never has time for, for Charlie, Charlie's little kid, Charlie Frost. And uh, they have that kind of dilemma. Uh, the film opens up with a really big uh, snowball war <laughs> with Charlie and his school buddies and all the bullies at school, all the second graders who are older than Charlie. And <clears throat> it, um, it kind of plays off as your typical, like, aiming to be super comedy family film. Uh, this film is definitely targeted towards kids and it uh, makes no apologies for it. It's semi, well, okay. It's very unbalanced. Um, it doesn't know how to balance comedy and drama in the perfect of ways. The first act completely, and especially the first like 10 to 15 minutes, is just scene after scene after scene that feels like the final scenes in films, like the the joyous, cheerful, like hurrah moments of films. Like there's a really corny scene actually that involves uh, Jack Frost coming home and uh, visiting his wife for the first time in a long time. And they kind of do this role play thing where he pretends to be somebody else and she like role plays that her husband's away and stuff like that. And then he mentions her lip gloss and his lips or his, her lip chap or whatever and his lips getting dry and uh, then they have their like cheesy movie moment kiss and the whole like opening of the film kind of plays out like that so it's that kind of movie for sure um, 
but yeah, this, this crazy ridiculous snowball fight is happening in the schoolyard where there's obviously no teachers around to stop these kids from destroying each other. Even one of the, uh, Charlie, as a matter of fact, goes up to the main bully and just slams him in the face with a snowball, like, to the point where in real life the kid would be hurt, but, you know, kids' movies in the 90s, late 90s. Um... I did like the bully being uh, pummeled in the face with that snowball, though. I really did enjoy that moment. Um, but anyway, the dad comes home from Denver, I believe, so where he was touring last. And he comes home. He gives his son, Charlie, a harmonica that he owned for a long time. And he claims to have bought when his son was born. And um, he tells him that, like... Uh, He's going to be there for his, uh, like, the father's going to be, tells his son, Charlie, that he's going to be there the next day for his hockey game, for sure, which he obviously ends up missing. But um, he gives him this harmonica, which, uh, which he got when his son was born, and he tells him that any time he plays this harmonica, his dad will hear the harmonica at, at any, like, wherever he is, wherever he is in the state, wherever he's playing, as if the if Charlie plays the harmonica, he'll uh, he'll always be able to hear it, kind of thing. Um, he gets a break where he, his band is going to be signed, but the only way to be signed is if he uh, goes to Aspen, Colorado, to uh, to play on Christmas Day. And there's really no way around this. The Charlie ends up like giving the harmonica back, saying he doesn't even want it anymore. Um, there's this weird scene where Jack Frost, he's going to, uh, to Aspen, like he's driving down there with his buddies, only to turn around and come back and realize that he doesn't want to go anymore and he actually wants to spend Christmas with his family like he should have done the whole time, which he should have just stayed behind. I don't know why he decided to go <laughs> travel to Aspen just to change his mind, like not even halfway there, but regardless... Uh, his buddy gives him the vehicle to come back home to where his family is staying at a cabin. And on the way there, um, he gets into a tragic accident and uh, it ends up taking his life. So um, it goes from really jolly and happy and uh, feel good to pretty tragic and pretty uh, devastating. So this kid loses his father um, and then it flashes forward immediately to a year later where the son is, you know, feeling the grief and... Uh, Feeling like his dad was never really there for him to begin with, but um, really feeling the loss in kind of, in, in many ways, because he lost his father at Christmas and, um, you know, only has certain memories here and there with him. But uh, one day he decides to build a snowman and he builds this snowman with all of his dad's stuff, such as his scarf and um, his, his jacket, his clothing. And he builds this in the yard, and then he goes upstairs and he plays the harmonica. And, uh, of course, when he plays the harmonica, the spirit of the father comes into the snowman, and the snowman comes alive. And, um, and then the rest of the film is basically his son realizing that the snowman is alive. Um, the snowman, or Jack Frost, because it has Jack Frost spirit, trying to convince the son which he does pretty quickly and pretty uh, strangely that, you know, it's dad in the, in the snow, uh, in the snowman. And uh, the rest of the film plays on like that. Now, Michael Keaton is really good in this movie until he's the snowman. It's really weird and it's, I don't understand the writing. See, he turns into such an immature, goofy, non-dad character when he becomes the snowman. There's banter back and forth between the sun and the snowman, and it's like the sun is being friends with like um like a like a like a a really oddly written, creepy, kind of immature, childish snowman. When Michael Keaton in the rest of the film, before he became the snowman, and even in a really touching final scene, um, when he drifts away into uh, the afterlife or whatever. Um, he, he's very, like, he's very dad-like. He's very respectable, respectable, and um, 
and and very sweet and sentimental. But when he's the snowman, he's just this like goofy, childish character. It's really weird the way th that Michael Keaton always obviously was doing what the director told him to do and what the script told him to do. But he really fit well into this story, I think, um, as the dad and not so much as the snowman. Um, this film did have an $85 million budget, which I was surprised to see them use so many um, cheap looking sets with that amount of money. Now, this film was also shot in California. It does take place in a fictional town of Medford, Colorado, I believe. Uh, so it does take place in Colorado, but the whole thing was shot in California. And that's probably why, because obviously there's a lot of scenes with snow, so they probably had to have a lot of that made for the sets and a lot of that like uh, probably melted real quick. And they probably had a hard time making a, a Christmas setting. Like this, it's not a fake looking Christmas setting either. Um, it does look pretty real, so they they definitely put the effort into that for being shot in California and everything. Um, but it's a very, like, kiddish movie uh, with a lot of dramatic scenes. Like, there's a lot of touching moments. Um, it is a very sad movie. I remember actually uh, watching this as a kid with my aunt, and I remember my aunt just bawling her eyes out, um, especially towards, like, the third act and when, you know, everything started happening. It does have a good message of... Um, dealing with grief properly and uh, learning to let go. Um, the film definitely delivered that message uh, well, just not executed in the best way when it comes to the humor. I don't think the humor <clears throat> uh, or what the director was going for with humor really landed in, uh, in the rest of the script and the rest of what the film was going for. But um, it's not all that bad. Like, it's at least enjoyable and at least heartwarming for the season. Um, you can, I would say, like, uh, maybe a better writer would, uh, would, would make the comedic scenes better. And I don't, I just don't know how to feel about the snowman parts. <laughs> like, there's this whole scene that involves a chase uh, on sleds and uh, uh, snowboards and stuff like that where the bullies are chasing Jack Frost and his son. And they're getting away in a sled and just super unrealistic shit that, that goes on through the whole thing. Which, the unrealism isn't like the 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 negative about the scene. It's just the corniness of it all. Like, uh, Jack Frost gets two uh, snowballs whipped at him and it goes like onto his chest to resemble, to resemble tits. And, <laughs> and uh, just the jokes that... That the snowman cracks is they're just weird it's just it's just weird and off-putting and it it just doesn't fit um you know the, the banter between him and his son it's not like a father-son talking like it's it's a complete father it's complete father-son moments when it's michael keaton being michael keaton like playing jack frost as a as a dad as a rock and roll singer but between the snowman and the sun, it's it's not it doesn't feel father son whatsoever. It just feels really really weird and really um, odd. <laughs> that's all I got on it. Um, and yeah, that's all I really got. Um, the actor Henry Rollins uh, pops up in here, uh, who I recognize from Wrong Turn Two, and uh, generally shows up here and there throughout all kinds of films. Uh, but he shows up here as like this over-the-top, hot-headed, uh, crazy coach, hockey coach. Um, so he was the other guy that I recognized, other than Michael Keaton. Everybody else in the film uh, were unknown actors, actors and actresses to me. I didn't really uh, recognize any of them. Um, there's this guy who plays a guy named Mac, who was Jack Frost's uh, bandmate and best friend. And <laughs> there's some funny scenes where he tries to have some father... or not father-son... Um, like man to man talk with Charlie, and again doesn't work. But that that plays off as com like comical because he tries so hard to have a man to man talk with a kid, but he, he just he can't do it. He's he's not used to kids. He doesn't have any of his own. He's just like this band guy who's all into like you know touring and rock and roll and nothing else really. But um, 
like I said, it's uh, you know I've seen I've seen cornier films, I've seen cheesier films. Um, I really like the sentimental moment at the end of the film where Michael Keaton as Jack Frost uh, drifts into the wind and um, and it's it, it's played out nicely. It it definitely gives that message, like I was saying about letting go and um, moving on when you have to move on, kind of thing. Um, I enjoyed that part of it. Um, and then the rest of the film was just pretty corny. <laughs> so it's streaming on Tubi. That's where I caught it. And um, as a family film, if you want to watch a film as a family, it, it definitely fits. Um, like I said, I've seen worse uh, family films. But um, I wouldn't say this one is like a classic or anything like that. It's nowhere close. Um, but it's not going to waste your time necessarily if uh, if you've never seen it before and you want to give it a watch, um, I'd say it's just meh. It's all right. It's uh, it's better than the last time I seen it. I liked watching it as an adult because totally different perspective than watching it as a kid, and um, that's really all I got on it. So that's Jack Frost from 1998, starring Michael Keaton. Uh, check it out on Tubi if you like. Um, if not, just skip it. <laughs> Either way, it's um, it's fine. At Christmas, though. For a holiday film, it's okay. Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you'd like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews. And uh, check out the ones on the channel already. Stay tuned for more if you're interested. And have a Merry Christmas, guys. Until next time, take care and cheers.